question, everyone. Welcome. We are reading 3, 18, 21, and then I think we'll just finish the chapter. Okay. Asana sandiram apeta sadvasam. Asana sandiram apeta sadvasam. Krita pratikaram aharya vikramam. Vilaksha daityam bhagavan sahasranir. Vilaksha daityam bhagavan sahasranir. Jagadhanarayana madhi sukaram. Asana shandhi ramapeta sadvasam. Pratikaram aharya vikramam. Vilaksya daityam bhagavan sahasranir. Sadvasam, Krita Pratikaram Maharya Vikramam, Krita Pratikaram Maharya Vikramam, Vilaksha Daityam Bhagavan Sahasrani, Vilaksha Daityam Bhagavan Sahasrani, Jagadana. Asana, Asana. Attained. Shandiram. Power. Apita. Devoid of. Sadvasam. Fear. Krita. Making. Pratikaram. Opposition. Aharya. Unopposable. Vikramam. Having power, vilaksha, having seen, daityam, the demon, bhagavan, the worshipful Brahma, sahasranihi, the leader of thousands of sages, jagada, addressed, narayanam, Lord Narayana. Sukara, having the form of a boar. Jai. Translation by Zwang Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. After arriving, we can repeat, yeah. After arriving at the place of combat, Brahma, the leader of thousands of sages, and transcendentalists, and transcendentalists saw the demon, saw the demon who, was 
who had attained such unprecedented power that no one could fight with him. Brahma then addressed Narayana, who was assuming the form of a boar for the first time. I'm not sure if uh, 3.18.21. I don't know. I think this is the battle between Lord Bor and Ranyaksha. We're in the middle, nearing the end right now. But this text, I was wondering who... Did, I'm not sure if I missed it in the Bhagavatam, but apparently Ranyaksha uh, performed some austerities and then got a benediction from Brahma to become nearly invincible in battle. Is that mentioned, does anyone know, in the Bhagavatam somewhere? Or is that yeah, in the another? Um, no, Haranyaksha. Okay, because I know Haranyakashipu has explained like how he did all these austerities and everything. But I'm just wondering if it's just mentioned in passing in the Bhagavatam, or if it's... I don't remember, okay. I don't remember that. Yeah, because I tried to find it. I just but know I, he was the <coughs> younger brother born first So it, 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 yeah, Prabhupada just, or it's mentioned coming up in passing in the next few verses, where Brahma's saying, like, sorry, I gave him a boon, so please kill him now. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Um, okay, Brahma Vacha Esha. Okay, yeah, we can recite it, but these are short. Esha Te Deva Devanam. Angri mulam upeyusham vipranam sarabeyinam bhutanam apyanagasam agaskrid vayakrid duskrid asmad radha varo suraha anbesan a pratirato Lokan Atati Kantakaha. Translation Lord Brahma said, My dear Lord, this demon has proved to be a constant pinprick to the demigods, the Brahmanas, the cows, and innocent persons who are spotless and always dependent upon worshipping your lotus feet. He has become a source of fear by unnecessarily harassing them. Since he has attained a boon from me, he has become a demon, always searching for a proper combatant, wandering all over the universe for this infamous purpose. Purport. There are two classes of living entities. One is called Sura, or the demigods, and the other is called Asura, or the demons. Demons are generally fond of worshiping the demigods, and there are evidences that by such worship, they get extensive power for their sense gratification. This later proves to be a cause of trouble to the brahmanas, demigods, and other innocent living entities. Demons habitually find fault with the demigods, brahmanas, and innocent, to whom they are a constant source of fear. The way of the demon is to take power from the demigods and then tease the demigods themselves. There is an instance of a great devotee of Lord Shiva who obtained a boon from Lord Shiva that the head of whomever he touched with his hand could come off its trunk. As soon as the boon was offered to him, the demon wanted to touch the very head of Lord Shiva. That is their way. The devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead do not, however, ask any favor for sense gratification. Even if they are offered liberation, they refuse it. They are happy, simply engaging in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. This, there's that famous story of Vrikasura, who he was given the boon by Shiva, and then Shiva chased or wanted to touch his head. And then Shiva ran away, and then all the demigods didn't know what to do. And they were like, I'm not sure how to solve this problem. Anybody who he touches, his head is just going to fall off. So then eventually he went to Narayana, and then he comes 
as the form of a brahmana. And I think he then tricks him. He's like saying, oh, what happened? He said, well, I got this benediction that I can touch anybody's head and then they'll die. And then he said, oh, you trust Shiva? I don't believe it. He's gone mad, so I, I can't trust his word. So why don't you just see if, just touch your own head and see if, if he's actually being serious. And then, so yeah. <laughs> And then it completely cracked. And then there's, I looked up, there's another um, story of this Basma Sura, which you probably all know, that he had the benediction from <coughs> Shiva that if you would touch anybody's head, it would turn to ashes. So there's actually a public service announcement. There's a commercial for it. It was for voting, I guess. But so what happened is um, Shiva had this, benedic gave this benediction to this demon, and then he was like looking at him and he was like, I want to see if this works, because he said, how is it going to work? How will I know? And then he said, oh, well, I, you just have to touch someone's head. And then he's looking around, and he's like, I don't see anybody but you. And so <laughs> he was going to touch <laughs> Shiva's head, and then Shiva was running, and then eventually he went to Lord Vishnu, and then Vishnu said, okay, I'll take care of this. So then he eventually then takes the form of Mohini Murti, and then he meets uh, Basmasura, and then he's saying, like, you like dancing, right, Mataji? Oh, okay, Hare Krishna. Oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, so what happened is Mohini Murti then said that, oh, well, because um, Basmasura was so in love with her, he said, will you marry me? He said, I will marry you, but what happened is I love, uh, the only person who I can marry has to outdance me, so we'll have a little dance off. So and then she starts dancing and then he starts dancing and they just, you know, keep trying to do more and more like harder moves, dance moves, and they're just having a dance off. And then eventually she does a dance move where she touches her own head and then he also like, whoops, you know, forgot about it. And then yeah, and then his head turned to ashes. So I thought that was a good story. So then at the end of this public service announcement, it's like, what does that mean for us? That means before you give that means for voting, before you give someone power, you have to think about it. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> it's interesting that they're using that story as like public service announcement for like, think, do your research before you vote in India. Mm -hmm. So that was funny. So, and then in the Vrikasura story, what Prabhupada is saying here that um, the devotees, where's this? Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, the devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead do not, however, ask any favor for sense gratification. And actually there's a little uh, part in that story where when Vrikasura got the benediction, he wanted to actually kidnap Parvati, and that's why he wanted to touch Shiva's head. So he was like, if I can just get rid of Shiva, then I can kidnap, kidnap Parvati. So then Prabhupada is saying that devotees, um, they're not asking for sense gratification, and there's so many benedictions, so many, um, parts in the Bhagavatam that are interesting to read were Dhruva Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, and so many others, when they um, finally meet Vishnu, they're saying like, I, don't, I just want your association of devotees, I just want devotional service, just give me that. And I was thinking about that, like, it's probably a long, for most of us, it's a process of getting to that point, of like coming to that realization. But Prabhupada has some nice purports where he's saying like, all this, sense gratification is even offered to dogs. So it's a very low, like, desire. So, and now we're finally given this human form of life that, you know, only um, can we practice religion. I remember reading um, Science of Self-Realization, Prabhupada's talking about, you know, you have this human form of life. This is the first book by Prabhupada that I read. And he's saying that you finally have this, you know, human form of life and then why are you just acting like an animal? So you don't see like dogs and cats like opening temples or doing anything like that. So then like now you have this human form of life where you can do spiritual processes. So why are you just doing animal propensities? So it's definitely, um, it's not like a realization that we come to overnight, but eventually I think if we keep on chanting, then we'll get to that point. And enough like knocks in the head by you know, life experiences were like, oh yeah, ouch. <laughs> but I was thinking about this one, um, I was doing dishes one time in Denver and this devotee said, 
when you do a devotional service, when you clean pots, you're cl cleaning your heart. And all these pots were really, really dirty. And I said, my heart's, <laughs> I said, my heart's not that dirty. <laughs> then she said, it takes many lifetimes, bro. <laughs> so, so, okay. So we can read a few more verses to the end of the chapter. And there are a couple more. There's one more story that this next verse brought to mind, which is kind of an interesting one. Okay. Oh, we're done. Okay. I'll just recite it. Okay. Mainam maya vinam driptam niran kusham asaptamam akrida balava deva yatashi visham utitam. Lord Brahma continued, My dear Lord, there is no need to play with this serpentine demon who is always very skilled in conjuring tricks and is arrogant, self-sufficient, and most wicked. Purport. No one is unhappy when a serpent is killed. It is a practice among village boys to catch a serpent by the tail and play with it for some time and then kill it. Similarly, the Lord could have killed the demon at once, but he played with him in the same way as a child plays with a snake before killing it. Brahma requested, however, that since the demon was more wicked and undesirable than a serpent, there was no need to play with him. It was his wish that he be killed at once without delay. Thankfully, snakes are illegal in uh, Hawaii, so we probably don't have to see anyone kill a snake here. But I was thinking about that one story about Kailash. Do you know the, the householder Kailash? you know that story? Anyone? So he was, there was a play that I saw and some devotees reenacted this play. <clears throat> so. Narada Muni is traveling around and he goes to this one person's house and he has this you know, big palace and everything. And he said, Kailash, come with me. Let's go chant Hare Krishna and we'll travel the world and we'll spread the glories of the Lord. And then Kailash is like looking at him like he's crazy. He's like, no, no, no. I'm, I've got a wife, I've got kids, I've got this house. You know, just wait for them to grow up a little and then I'll, I'll come with you and then we'll go and chant and you know, we'll have fun traveling Sankirtan. So then he said, okay, fine, I'll come back a little later. So he comes back a few years later. All the kids are old and married and they have grandkids now. So he said, Kailash, come with me. Let's go chant Hare Krishna and we'll travel around and we'll spread the glories. Let's do Kirtan everywhere, every town and village. And then he said, no, no, no. He said, you told me that once the kids are grown up, then you'd be ready. He said, yeah, I know, but what happens is these grandkids they're around, and these kids, they don't know how to train them up properly, so I have, to, I have to stay around, you know, so they can train them up properly. He's like, okay, I'll come back a little later. So he comes back, and then they said, he comes back, and he's looking, <laughs> he says, has anyone ever seen, has anyone seen my friend Kailash anywhere? And he's, they said, oh, I'm sorry to say, but he passed away, actually. So he said, oh, no. So then... Narada Muni like looking around and he hears this little woof, woof, woof from the you know side of the room and Narada Muni he can understand all languages so he's having a conversation with this dog and this dog is saying that in his dog language that I'm Kailash. He's like, What's happened? <laughs> he said, What happened to you? I told you we should go chant and now like what to do? He said, Okay, I can even take you, you can even chant, but come on, let's go. He said, No, no, no. I've got this big property and there's no one here to guard it. Some thieves might come in the middle of the night. So, and then he's like, ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> so then he's like, whatever. So he goes and then eventually he comes back again. And then he said, has anyone, <laughs> has anyone seen that dog? And then they said, no, that dog died. And they said, oh, gosh. You know? So then it's like, I don't know. I said, oh, another soul lost. You know, but then he hears this hiss, hiss, hiss. And then he looks and he said, it's this snake now. And then he said, Kailash, is that you? He said, yeah, it's me. But he said, come on, let's go. You know, I don't know. I mean, gosh, now you're a snake. What can I do? But, you know, okay, let's go. And then he's like, no, no, no. I still have to look after this place, you know. I have to protect it. And then finally an Muni like, said, okay, he's not going to come with me. So then he calls his, like, 
family members over. There's a snake over here. Come, you know, find it. And then they all take the snake and they all start like beating it to like get it out of there. And then the snake is finally like, okay, Nardo, I'll come with you. <laughs> take me. <laughs> so, oh. so we should probably, well, we're all here chanting Hare Krishna all the time, so we don't have to wait. You know, so somehow or other, when we met devotees, we didn't say that. No, 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 I'll, I'll wait to chant Hare Krishna. So we're the lucky ones. So, okay. So now there are just a few more verses, and then we'll finish up. Okay. Navaya nayavad eshavardeta svambhavam prapyadarunaha svambhavam ayam astaya tavajja yagam. Achita. Brahma continued, My dear Lord, you are infallible. Please kill this sinful demon before the demoniac hour arrives and he presents another formidable approach favorable to him. You can kill him by your internal potency without doubt. Isha Gorattama Sadhya Loka Chambat Kari Prabho Upasarpati Sarvatman Suranam Jayam Avaha. My Lord, the dark evening which covers the world is fast approaching. Since you are the soul of all souls, kindly kill him and win victory for the demigods. Adunai so pijin nama yoguma hutiko hyagat shivaya nastam suradam ashunistara dustara. The auspicious period known as Abhijit, which is most opportune for victory, commenced at midday and has all but passed. Therefore, in the interest of your friends, please dispose of this formidable foe quickly. I looked up this Abhijit. Um, so it's basically from 11.45 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. So that's if you guys ever want success in something, then do it midday. And I was thinking about this, how Brahma is telling him, you know, kill him now because the night is coming. And all of the, um, you know, there's so many sayings like, nothing good happens after midnight. You know that one? Your, your mother probably used to tell you, yeah, your father. And then, um, I, I know my spiritual master used to say, like, never leave your house after nine o'clock. It's all Maya after that. And uh, even I think in Ramayan, there are a couple parts in the war where the demons would like, you know, take kind of invisible forms and like kind of fight in the shadows or, you know, they would get more power in the night. And I think there's even that one verse, Ramo Rajamani, that one where there's a verse, I think it's like Nishchara or something, like that's a name for a demon, like those who are active at night. So, and we can see most of the crimes, like I know all the murders and everything like that, shooting, stabbings, bar fights, usually those are late in the night. And we know also of the, um, you know, modes of nature are supposedly more prominent. The modes of ignorance are more prominent in the nighttime. So that's why it's always good. Early to bed, early to rise, keeps one healthy, wealthy, and wise. So, yeah. And then the last verse. Dishtya tvam vihitam rityum ayam asadita svayam Vikram Yainam Ridehatva Lokan Adehi Sharmani. This demon, luckily for us, has come of his own accord to you, his death ordained by you. Therefore, exhibiting your ways, kill him in the duel and establish the worlds in peace. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, 18th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Battle Between Lord Bor and the Demon Haranyaksha. Jai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Alright, so if anyone has any comments, questions. How did this person go from a dog body to a snake body? I don't understand what the correlation and connection was. <clears throat> you know, that's a good question. I think it was a made up story, but <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it reminded me of that story of the mouse that went to the bomb. You know that, right? He wanted the body of a cat because and then the dogs were harassing him, mm. and then it was the dog catcher, and then he wanted the tiger's body, and then mm. he wanted to eat the Brahmin. Yeah. 
back to a house in Angola. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Mushtaka Baba or Mushtiki Baba or something. Yeah. Mushtaka Baba. Yeah. That is a good one. Oh. We'll just, I'll just read one of these. I think there's a short purport, 499, which is in the same theme. Okay, so this is Dhruva Maharaj <coughs> telling Vishnu when he meets him. Persons who worship you simply for the sense gratification of this bag of skin are certainly influenced by your illusory energy. In spite of having you, you are like a desired tree and are the cause of liberation from birth and death. Foolish persons, such as me, desire benedictions from you for sense gratification, which is available even for those who live in hellish conditions. Purport. Dhruva Maharaj represented, er, sorry, Dhruva Maharaj repented because he had come to the Lord to render devotional service for a material profit. He here condemns his attitude. Only due to gross lack of knowledge does one worship the Lord for material profit or for sense gratification. The Lord is like a desire tree. Anyone who can have whatever he desires from the Lord. Anyone can have whatever he desires from the Lord. But people in general do not know what kind of benediction they should ask from him. Happiness derived from the touch of skin or sensuous happiness is present in the life of hogs and dogs. Such happiness is very insignificant. If a devotee worships the Lord for such insignificant happiness, he must be considered devoid of all knowledge. Yeah, and it, I think because we're all healthy, young, and you know, we don't think about all that, like, what would you want at the time of death? Like, at the time of death, if somebody gives you a million dollars and you only have, like, 25 seconds to live, it's probably not going to do anything for you. Or you're going to be like, why do I want a million dollars? But usually we don't know when we're going to die. Some people are blessed where they're given, like, a little bit of a window, like, you're probably only going to live another six months or something like that, and then they can kind of get everything in order. But... Some of us, we could just die at any moment, so we should always be thinking like that. And then also, I remember that verse, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundaram, that he just wants, he doesn't want anything, he just wants devotional service, birth after birth. So that's, hopefully we'll get to that point through chanting and hearing and the devotee association. All right, so I don't think it's a sin to stop early, so we'll end here. Thank no you all. Okay, Jai Krishna. Shri Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.